My name is Michael, and I'm a prison guard at this penitentiary. As I was doing my rounds today, inmate number 1857, hanging on his cell bars, shouted at me. Hey, your daughter's seven years old this year, right? She's the first one I'll visit when I get out. What? Enraged, I rushed to the bars and grabbed his collar, and he laughed as if it were amusing. Inmate 1857. His name is Rick, the most notorious criminal in this prison. Rick is a psychopath who killed a woman in her 60s, chopped her up with a knife, and even ate her flesh before claiming insanity. Rick was incredibly lucky. The victim's son actively sought leniency for him. The devout Christian son decided to forgive Rick in the name of God, even after his mother was brutally murdered. It was something I couldn't understand at all. Thanks to this, Rick was acknowledged as mentally impaired and received a 15-year sentence only. After his sentence was confirmed, Rick began to show his true colors. He constantly hurled insults without reason and threatened to kill the families of those who irritated him once he was released. Knowing his madness, people grew anxious as his release date approached. The ironic thing was that this psychopath was a dutiful son. Having lived with a single mother his entire life, he cherished her dearly. His mother began preparing to open a beef jerky store with Rick about a month before his release and started sending boxes of jerky and letters to the prison. However, bringing in outside food was strictly forbidden in the prison. So we tried to return the parcels she sent, but the warden stopped me and said he would allow the packages to be delivered to Rick. I couldn't understand his actions. The warden must have been bribed by Rick's mother. Dear son, your mother is preparing a jerky business these days. Please try it and give me your feedback. From your future business partner, Mom. When I opened the box of jerky, I saw a letter written in meticulous handwriting. She seemed quite serious about the business, sending a box of jerky made with various recipes to the prison every week. Smoked, chili, teriyaki flavors, and more. And thanks to this, Rick spent his days chewing on jerky. He even began using the jerky like currency, ordering his cellmates around. The prisoners, who relied solely on the prison-provided rations, cleaned for Rick, acted violently on his behalf, or dug up information on people Rick didn't like in exchange for jerky. Rick also collected feedback from the inmates about which jerky recipe tasted the best and sent letters to his mother. He was already fulfilling his role as a business partner before his release. He showed no remorse for the deceased victim and focused solely on making the business prosper. I was angry at the victim's son. If my mother had been so brutally murdered, I would have never forgiven the perpetrator. Due to his excessive tolerance, the evil demon would soon be released into the world and more victims would follow which could include my own family. Rick's release date approached, now just a week away, and his mother had already opened the store and was waiting for him. The store was named Mom's Beef Jerky as a tribute to her love for her son. As the release date neared and my anxiety peaked, I took a secret day off, which I didn't tell my wife and daughter about. I had to visit Rick's store, track his movements, and carefully devise ways to protect my family from him. When I went to the address written on the letter, Mom's Beef Jerky, I noticed a sign with a familiar phrase. It was a store opened by Rick's mother. At that time, I saw the warden coming out of the store. It was clear that he was involved in some sort of backroom dealing with Rick's mother. I hid in my car until the warden disappeared, then entered the store. Now that I had witnessed it with my own eyes, I had to expose their inappropriate dealings. As I opened the store door, there stood a man there with fair skin and a gentle demeanor. Welcome. Huh? Isn't this Rick's mother's store? Oh, yes, it is. Who are you? You should be the employee. I'm a prison guard at the prison where your son is incarcerated. I saw the warden leaving just now. What's the relationship between him and Rick's mother? Oh, Rick's mother is inside. Would you like to meet her and hear it directly from her? Follow me. 
I followed the man to a storeroom deep inside the kitchen, and he pointed to the ceiling, saying, She's here. There, a middle-aged woman's head was hanging from the ceiling, shriveled and twisted after being soaked in sauce. Ah, what is this? I was so shocked that I screamed and collapsed on the spot. Then the man smiled brightly and said, I'm the son of the woman who was killed by Rick. I've been waiting for Rick to be released and come to this store as soon as possible. Whew, I've sent the rest of the body and now only the head remains. I'll prepare the head according to the final recipe Rick advised and plan to send it to the prison tomorrow. I ran out of there in utter disbelief and didn't tell anyone about what happened that day. A week later, I saw the corner of the prison warden's mouth go up strangely as he stared at Rick, who was happily tasting the last delivered jerky. And not long after his release, Rick went missing. <laughs>